What's going on? It's Spagaver coming to you from Hancon. Got in late last night. Rolled in about 3.30, somewhere in that, that general neighborhood. And finally got into the hammock just prior to 4 o'clock. And then was up like 7.30 when the bullhorn went off here. But had a chance to, uh, to walk around a little bit, take a look at some setups. Just kind of chilling right now here in my Terrapin Outfitters hatchling. Got beekeeper sitting beside me in a very cool double layer, extra long hatchling, and uh, and the cool little uh, setup to hang it from, which is pretty awesome. Got our setup right here is our sight. I've got my dream hammock Darien with my underground quilts. Got my hammock gear. Cuban fiber tarp set up and beekeeper set up over here. Last night he was in his Wahala hammock and outdoors hammock and tonight he'll be in the Sheltoe and he's got his Cedar Ridge outdoors big ol' tarp up there. And then we put up the uh, the Hennessy hammock <laughs> over there and that's where our gear hangs out. So lots of cool stuff going on here. Gonna be walking around checking out some of the vendors We've got underground quilts here, we've got dream hammocks, we've got Dutchware gear, batch stoves, we've got Sierra Madre, we've got Terrapin Outfitters, man we've got all kinds of people running around so we're going to try and get a hold of them and, and see, if they'll, uh, see if they'll talk with us a little bit, I don't know, kind of shady characters walking around, I don't know if they want to hang out with us. I'm here with Randy or Papa Smurf from Dream Hammock. How are you doing today? Very good. You doing doing pretty well. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so have you had a lot of traffic over here? Oh, we've been busy. Uh, we've been pretty pretty well busy, uh, nonstop all day. Uh, a lot of folks coming out just to look things over and trying some of the different sizes, some of the different fabrics. It's really important to. To, for them to, to see what hammocks they like, what sizes they like, so forth. Awesome. So, I kind of wanted to do something a little different on this one. And, you know, most people can go to your, your website and check out your hammocks. And, and, and I've shown your hammocks before. So, mm -hmm. tell me something different. Something about uh, maybe how you got into it or, or something interesting about, about it. Okay. Well, the biggest, my biggest problem was as a uh, Boy Scout leader, uh, camping 12 months a year, uh, bad hips, bad back. I got to the point to where I couldn't sleep on the ground anymore. I told uh, you know some of the other leaders in the troop that I have to quit. Is that right? you know, I can't do this. Um, one of them suggested that I get into hammocks. I bought a, a little cheap you know hammock. Uh, uh -huh. It was a terrible hammock, but it was much better than any tent that I'd ever slept in. Right. So I immediately said, well, I can do better than that. So I built a couple, built a couple more. And it has extended my hiking uh, ability. Uh, from there, you know, I've done several more AT hikes and so forth. Even though 
my health is just degenerated. My hips are, are, are worse now, so no more hiking. But basically, that's where the that's where everything started. Yeah. So, but this weekend, you're you're actually you're out here with everybody else camping out right out here. Absolutely. As soon as I sit down on a chair, I'm probably done for the day. <laughs> so, but yeah, having a great time down here. Awesome. Really. So, awesome. Well, thanks, Randy. I appreciate it. You bet. Thanks a lot. Good morning. It is day two for me of FangCon. Uh, today is Sunday, and uh, well, a lot of people pretty much last night after the raffle packed up and started heading out, or early this morning they're packing up and heading out. Uh, I've heard a lot of people kind of gathering their stuff and, and, and leaving. And that's unfortunate because I didn't do a lot of filming yesterday. I was talk walking around, I talked to a lot of people, but there were some people that I really wanted to get on video talking to. Uh, you know, Dutch was one of them I really wanted to get on video talking to a little bit about the AT and about his through hike and stuff like that. We did talk about it, but unfortunately it wasn't on camera, and uh, so I don't have that. There was another one, there was a... I believe it was a sparrow, a dream hammock sparrow that had the top cover that was the AT. And she had, her name I believe was Sunshine, and she had a, like a mini sparrow underneath her, it hung underneath, that was, was a full on hammock. It was zippered, uh, had the bug net, had an underquilt, but it was just for her dog. I mean, it was probably maybe two and a half feet long. It was a, a small, little uh little hammock for her dog i thought it was really really cool last night when i went by she had the uh the tarp up and so i didn't want to i didn't want to bother her and it was too dark to to really get any good good film of it and so this morning mike had walked by and said she's gone so uh missed that chance so i'll walk around today and talk to as many people as i can see what kind of cool setups are out there but uh some of the ones that i really wanted to to talk with i believe missy and paul from uh underground quilts they're gone as well so oh well i'll, I'll get who i can get so last night it got down probably to somewhere around freezing there's frost all over everything this morning 
right now it says I believe 35 degrees so it was a little bit cooler than that it's seven about 730 a little after 730 right now and I'm in a uh, new hammock a new system uh, this is a system that I'll be testing out for a little while and last night I slept in it with my quilts my underground quilts but I've got the uh, the quilts that actually go with this system that I'll be testing out tonight and it's supposed to get a little bit colder I think down to about 27 and there are 30 degrees set so I'm gonna be kind of pushing the limits on them and that's intentional to see just how far I can push them and stay comfortable so we'll see how how that goes but uh, yeah look for look for a test of this system this is the uh, Sierra Madre Stratos <laughs>
I believe Beekeeper and I may be the last people here when uh, the day ends. I guess we'll we'll find out, but there's a lot of people that are packing up and heading out today. Uh, all of our friends from South Carolina, North Carolina area, you know, that, that whole group that came down with Terrapin Outfitters, they're all heading out or have headed out. So, you know, it's it's thinning out. We do have the, uh, the Hang Your Own Hang podcast coming up later today that I'm going to be participating in. But other than that, it looks like a lot of people are packing up and heading out. So Beekeeper and I, we have been swapping out hammocks and stuff uh, pretty much every night. So last night, Beekeeper was in the Sheltoe and really liked it. Uh, really liked the way it, it laid and, and kind of backed up my opinion of it. I slept in the Sierra Madre Strato system with the solo hammock and uh, I slept really well. I used my own under quilts, which were 20 degree set. It did get down. Uh, so I showed the thermometer that showed it was a low of 30. Some other people said that they have a thermometer that said low of 28. It's supposed to get down to about 27 tonight, maybe a little bit cooler than that. And I'm going to try out the Sierra Madre. I've got it right over here. So I've got the Inferno 30 degree set sitting right here. Uh, so I'm going to throw that into the, the hammock and use that for tonight and see how I fare, see whether or not I can take that down actually to 30 or maybe even below 30 with it being a 30 degree set. It's a little risky because uh, usually people want that 10 degree buffer there. I was using 20s last night and was absolutely fine. Uh, but if I get cold with the 30s, I can absolutely throw my 20s on and, uh, and be good. So we're going to give that a, give that a shot. Uh, first night in the system, still trying to get it all sorted out. It's, uh, it's got a lot, of, a lot of pieces to it. And so putting it together is a, is a process that I'm going to have to get better at. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that on another video, just kind of getting this one going. So I'm here with, with Flip, and uh, so tell me what this one is. This is a Clark VX2, uh, also known Vertex, uh, that my six and eight year olds sleep in. Uh, so it's basically two hammocks put together with space in between. Um, if Clark is watching this, they could maybe for once show up. You know, you do have people here with Clark gear, um, and they yeah. volunteered to actually let you set up. But um, it's an all Clark setup. So it's very cool. A lot of a lot of room in here for gear in the middle. There's like pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, the, each side actually has six bags built into it. Um, okay, which makes these very unique when you're. Uh, on the Clarks, so you actually have six bags built in on either side. Very cool. Um, and the uh, Clark 270s are basically one of these, which I have over on the other side. Okay. Um, we love them. So. Very nice. And so they just hook up a an under quilt, just like a normal no, hammock would. Um, so on these, uh, and I'll show you. These are actually uh, the ones we made at home. They attach with Velcro. Okay. Um, I so see that. Clark builds Velcro into all of their hammocks. Gotcha. Um, but we're going to be switching these over to the same as the ones we have here. These are actually local libres. Okay. Um, George couldn't come down. He was sick. Right. Uh, George is a great guy. He started. He's the only one that I know of right now that makes uh, down quilts for Clark. Um, they are phenomenal. Um, we have two of them. I'll be getting more of them. Uh, but this is a Clark uh, NX270. Awesome. Yeah, so. I've got I've got three local Libre quilts, and they're all yeah. top-notch quality. Yeah. George, George is great. So. I love George. Uh, George was supposed to fly into Orlando. We were going to give him a ride up here, but he got sick. So hopefully he'll come down later in the year, but uh, George is great. Hey, guys. I'm here with Cool Oz. Yeah. And uh, I was just checking out his setup. He's got a an awesome chameleon. So why don't you... Show us your setup and talk to us a little bit about it. Awesome, man. Well, you know, everybody knows this is a chameleon by, uh, by Dutch. Um, I have the burnt, the, the burnt orange uh, because it's uh, one of my favorite colors. I have the uh, the uh, the covering is uh, yellow, which I added, which really worked for me last night because um, it was pretty cold. Weather we did not expect it. Um, uh, the bottom, uh, my quilt is a, it's a synthetic uh, quilt, which actually worked really well for me. Um, I actually did order the 
a top and bottom quilt from Kami Gear. Um, and I knew I wasn't going to get it because I ordered it only a couple, uh, couple weeks ago. Um, this is actually from the Kickstarter from Dutch. Awesome. Um, uh, so everything other than the underquilt came from him. Uh, and uh, in fact, Dutch came by yesterday and actually showed me how to properly install the, uh, the, the tarp because I had everything backwards. Right. In fact, <laughs> I, and, uh, he came and he said, did we send it like that? And I said, yes, I think you did. And he said, no, we didn't. <laughs> and after about a minute, I realized I think I did it like that. So he showed it to me properly, how to properly set it up. And uh, I, was, I had a great time sleeping in the, in the community. It was my second, uh, uh, third night actually sleeping in it. Um, one of the great benefits about it is that is when it's cold outside and your daughter gets in there and you need to get out, <laughs> you could get out on the other end and not interrupt your sleeping. So yeah. being, being able to get in and out from both sides. Yeah, really, the access from both sides is, is awesome. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I, that was the first time I realized I could get out on the other side. Um, <laughs> and um, as I said, it's... It, it sleeps wonderfully. I mean, the, I probably will, you know, will, will always, you know, have the chameleon or um, the double that he, sh he uh, displayed yesterday for my girls. Right. Um, but I love it, man. I, 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 I totally, it's, it's a sacrifice. <laughs> and uh, I w got into a lot of trouble for buying it. <laughs> <laughs> so I totally appreciate it. And, uh, and uh, you know, there's, I have no, nothing negative about it. Everything about it is awesome. It's, uh, it's great. The, uh, the covering truly holds in the moisture, the, your, your body mo uh, moisture at nighttime. Um, in, in fact, my daughter's like, I said, you know, well, she's like, what's the difference between hammocks? I said, no, you know, you saw the difference between my hammock and yours because when you're in the chameleon, you truly feel like you, you know, you, you're secure. Yeah, it just kind of wraps around you and keeps yes. that warmth in yeah. and it, does, it helps quite a bit. Definitely, so, definitely. So we were talking a little bit about backpacking mm -hmm. and, and you know we all have those things that we, we take out there with us that, that people think we're crazy for carrying. So what's, what's your thing? Um, my thing is, as I said, um, my, um, it, my food. Um, I bring a family size pack of Oreo cookies with me and everyone thinks I'm crazy uh, about <laughs> it. Um, but because I got so much flag for it the first time, now I make it a point to go with it every time. Now also, my trail name is Cool House 91, and also I always bring a cooler with me. Okay. Um, uh, it's a little tiny cooler, but again, on a trail and a backpacking trip, everyone always said, who brings a cooler three miles into the woods? <laughs> well, my name is Cool House, so I bring a cooler. You know, it goes with me. Um, awesome. I think everybody has something that they bring, and uh, my Oreo cookies and cooler, it works great for me. So that's awesome. it, that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, All right, being man. part of this. No problem. Thank you. Good luck in the journeys. Thanks. Jonathan just stroked out, and I think yeah. we're right here. Bad, 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 bad. Hey folks, welcome to the Hang Your Own Hang podcast, a monthly podcast about hammocks, hammock camping, and everything related. Our goal here is to enlighten you if you're a ground dweller and to entertain you if you're already a tree dweller. I'm Jonathan Coupel. 
This is my co-host Mark Baldwin. Good afternoon, Jonathan. We made it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we're down here at uh, sunny Florida. Yep, and it's beautiful today. It is, and we're uh, at HangCon. So, to all those folks listening, uh, apologize for the background noise and stuff, but welcome to HangCon with us. We've got a few guests, and we're actually going to kick right into the podcast. So, going around clockwise, uh, I ask everybody to kind of introduce yourselves. Spagiver or Mark Ort. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Gresh. I'm Trip Smith, formerly known as Sailing and Such. All right, so welcome, Trip Smith. <laughs> Hammock camping is still a bon enough of a niche and something that people are learning about that we need an educational channel. I thought it might be interesting to talk a little bit about you know where is hammock camping going and you know how far are we away from being so mainstream as a as a as a product or a space in the camping industry that you don't need to tell people how to do it that people just know. Hey guys, so I am here with Jonathan and Mark from the Hang Your Own Hang podcast. Really cool that they got to come out here. Came all the way down from New York, down here to Florida for the uh, HangCon event. And we just did a podcast up in the lodge. So what do you guys think of this? It's great. I mean, I had a great time. Um, sort of sort of wish we were able to come out have some more time instead of traveling all day yesterday. And then uh, getting here, you know, last night already at dark time and all. Yeah. But uh, it's been a great time, and actually, what's great is being able to put faces to people's trail names that you see on the forums and everything. And then right. we've we've met, we've talked on the phone and stuff, and then on Facebook and everything. Um, but actually, to see face-to-face conversations and all, it's you know, it's been a lot of fun. Definitely something I'd like to do again. And I mean, yeah. the food was amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. Was. And then there's gonna be more good food tonight. There and is. there's less people, so more we food. Get, we get to eat more. Yeah. Bigger. And, and there's been a, a moonshine thing here, so we'll probably sample that up there by the fire so have you guys seen i know that unfortunately this morning a lot of people have, have packed up and left but over here we still got a pretty good group of people have you guys seen any any cool setups anything that's unique not yet not really I, i've been i hadn't tried not to be too nosy i mean that one guy um i've been Timber, super nosy. yeah <laughs> um he's got a really neat setup with a trailer kind of a modular trailer for his hammocking which is pretty neat um but, you know, looking around, there's so many people. Oh, you know what? The setup of those tarps actually right behind you. I don't pe- know if people can see it. But, um, you know, that that's something I think uh, Warbonnet has with the, okay. with the interior spreader bars. That looks really neat. I want I yeah, to check cool. out some more about that. So, there's yeah, a, cool. yeah, I did see a few uh, pretty cool winter tarps. Well, it's nice yeah. being able to actually see, you know, it's not something you're going to go to or REI or anything to be able to look at, play with, you know, see it set up and everything. So being able to see and see, okay, there's Underground Quilt over there, there's War Bonnet over there, you know, there's Dutch over here, Dream Hammock over there, and uh, just being able to see all that and actually see it set up instead of, you know, just on a YouTube video or on pictures it's like going on their to a, website. It's like going to a car show. Yeah, yeah it exactly. Is. It is. Exactly. You know, if you love cars or if you love hammocking, go to a group hang go see what everybody else is doing learn a few things totally worth it yeah yeah bring out friends bring out people that that you think could be interested in getting into it i mean i know a lot of us brought extra stuff just so that people could could try it out you know i I brought out a dream hammock a chameleon and and some other pieces just so that people could try them out and and i know that there are other people here that are doing the same thing so you know bring friends out let other people know you're bringing them and and people will have gear so that they can be be set up and, and stay warm uh, it's been a little bit colder than people thought it was going to be this weekend, and, and I think everyone's been chipping in. Last night at the raffle, they even announced, hey, if you don't have insulation for tonight, right. let someone know and we'll we'll get it for you. You know, we had great vendors here that were able to hook people up. So I guess one of the questions I have for you guys, uh, you know, with the, the podcast, so what, what sparked that? What was the, the thing that set that off? You mean doing a podcast? Yeah. Um, well, a couple things. I'd listened to podcasts for years and audiobooks before that. And, um, traveling for my work, I have a lot of windshield time. So it's kind of a, for me, it was kind of an opportunity to give back to the community in a way that I couldn't do in any other way. I didn't feel comfortable doing any other way. Um, so that was, that was a big part of it for me. And it was some, the other part of it was when I started getting into hammock camping, it was almost an obsession. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, no, not at all. <laughs> no. God help you. 
and it was a good way for me to get some closure to that and get past it so that I could kind of get, you know, so now I've got this, I've got this thing that allows me to have that be a part of my life where I'm not consuming, but I'm actually producing. Nice. Okay. So I asked Mark, you know, Mark, you could probably yeah. tell your story a little bit. He basically just asked me and voluntold me. <laughs> said, like, hey, I want to do a ho- I need a co-host. Yeah, you don't have to do any work. <laughs> yeah. And basically that was it and sucked me in. So, and it was already, you know, we were already getting into uh, doing more and more camping with our boys and everything. So it was, you know, it's something I was, yeah, sure, I'll get into it. I have no idea what I'm doing, but let's go ahead. You knew what a podcast so. was before that, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, there you go. So, but, so you need yeah, that's it. And he said he was doing all the computer stuff on it. So, hey, even better. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in Florida in January. It's been good. Yeah. yeah. So, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been it's been great listening to the content. You know, I, I take it out backpacking with me. I, I try and save it up for those trips because I usually do at least one weekend a month out on the trail. And so, uh, you guys do one podcast yeah, a month. Sorry, and so I try and save month. try and save it up and, and get out there and, and listen to it while I'm out on the trail. Okay. Uh, so it's been it's been really good for me too, and I appreciate you guys inviting me on now now twice. So, yeah. Yep. You know, I'm still I'm still trailing behind Gresh, but maybe someday. <laughs> oh man, he's got a lot to say. He always we'll does. We'll need some pale. Uh, <laughs> so guys, for those out there that haven't seen where you're at, let them know how they can find you. Oh, well, you're on our Facebook page at facebook.com, H-Y-O-H podcast. Yep. Right. yep. Or on our website, hyohpodcast.com. And I think that's about it. You can Hi. search in iTunes or Google oh, yeah. Play for Hang Your Own Hang or uh, HYOH as well, and you'll find us. Or on the internet, the Hammock Camping Podcast. Yep. We're the only one out there. Yep. Awesome. So, yeah, awesome. Dem- definitely come out. We've got a couple of years worth of backstory, so if you like what you hear, there's plenty to catch up. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys no, thanks. being part of this. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good morning. It's a. Uh, s- Sunday? Monday? Monday. It's Monday morning here at HangCon 2018 and we're down to probably the last 40 or so people here. Just had breakfast, there were about 35 people up there and so there's probably a few that are just eating at their sites. Last night it didn't quite get down as cold as Sunday, going into Sunday. It got down, uh, I saw 37. I'll go see if that thermometer's up and see what it says the low was but the night before definitely got down into the upper 20s so it was it was definitely colder the night before than it was last night so i was using the uh sierra madre strato system and because it was colder gonna be colder and i have the uh the 30 degree quilt set i decided to go with their winter barrier now the one problem that i did find with the winter barrier is that it holds condensation really really bad so let me show you what i'm talking about so here is the winter barrier and i've got it kind of set up so that it will dry out a little bit kind of hung here but you can see all the water that's all over inside of this and what that did was it it caused some problems i don't know i've got this set up so that the sun will hit it a little bit um if i pull this up you might be able to now you can still see a couple of drops of water here in the, the netting. You see the netting's wet there. And then the sides of the quilt itself, the under quilt, were pretty wet. You see a little bit of water right there on that one. Um, but it wasn't just on the surface of the quilt, especially right here. So I lay head right, foot left. So this was pushed out, and this area right here was all wet. Um, and it was soaked into the down. You can actually see right now it has dried a little bit and there's a little bit less compression right here than there is on either side of it. So where it got wet actually did lose a little bit of loft. So that's something I'm going to have to watch out for and try and figure out how to avoid that if you're using the winter barrier. Now there was no condensation above me, no condensation in the, the fly itself, but that is something to be concerned with and you know, I'm going to have this thing for a little while and be doing some testing and see if maybe there's a way that I can set it up that it doesn't do that. So we've still got a few few people here last night. We were hanging out with, uh, with Jonathan and Mark from the Hang Your Own Hang podcast. Just kind of hanging out, talking, had, had dinner and 
and missed dessert but then ended up getting dessert so that was that was good and uh you know just just hung out went to bed kind of early about 9 30 climbed into the, the hammock because it was it was starting to get cold and i was just i was ready to lay down and i slept great again um you know all three nights here i have slept really really well so that's a that's a good thing the beekeeper how were uh how are things here this weekend good a lot of folks running around a lot of different things here I, I was kind of surprised that there weren't more vendors but maybe uh some of the weather scared them off i don't know yeah it could be how do you like that that hammock you've been in this weekend it was nice it's nice and wide uh, especially when the pull out's there it's um makes it really roomy um i didn't have a problem say with said hammock i had a problem with my uh my under quilt I, I, you know it, it is a work in progress and uh, so it was moving around on me a little bit but the the way that that thing is uh spread out like that it, it's really open um my head can lean over as far as, as far as i want and i won't get the bug net in the face so it's really it's, it's nice it's nice so and i got almost almost flat in it so Right on. So everybody is uh, tearing down, getting ready to get out of here. It's definitely thinned out. We got our site pretty well packed up. I got my suitcase packed and ready to get back on the plane. I've just got to put my carry-on stuff together. These guys had all of their uh, all their stands up in a circle, kind of circle the wagons type deal. They're all taking them down now and getting ready to go. We've still got the guys down here with the uh, Clark Jungle Hammocks set up but but really when you look around it has cleared out significantly not a lot still left here probably down to the last uh, 20 to 30 people probably the last last I don't know probably less than 10 10 hammocks still hung in this place or, or right around that number so yesterday we heard about a story where uh, Mark Baldwin's son or Mark and Jonathan's sons. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure who was the uh, the party at fault, but there was <laughs> there was an alcohol stove that wasn't quite out yet, and they tried to fill it and uh, had a little explosion. And here's the the aftermath of that. So you can see, uh, Kelty tarps and alcohol don't really mix. <laughs> so that was that was the aftermath of that. That's what uh that's what happens when when alcohol and flames hit lightweight nylon material so that's a warning to all of you out there so i am here with little ricky timber and gumbo three of the very important people with getting hancon 2018 and all the previous hancons together running going smooth and being the success that it is so I just wanted to sit down with them today and get a little bit of their insight into why this is such a special hang and why it's special to them. I think uh, what makes HangCon special really is uh, the people that come. Um, not only do we see the same people year after year, um, just new people coming in, people coming in from all the way from Canada, uh, from the Southwest, from the Northwest. Um, a lot of different ideas and things like that that go around and uh, get shared. I think it makes HangCon special to me because I always come back learning something new. Um, for me, I think what makes HangCon special is it's a way to sh for Tim and I to share something that we really, really love to do. It's always good to disconnect a little bit, and Doe Lake is a, is a really fabulous place for doing that because it's beautiful and even when it's cold it's it's not unbearably cold because you at least got the beautiful view of the lake going on and the internet's not exactly reliable and you kind of have to just be in the moment while you're here and um, for me it's a a way to do that and still be connected with people and relational because relationships are where everything happens Definitely. Timber. Yes, I agree completely. Um, I like what Ricky said about the people who come back year after year. Those are or, our or friends. Gumbo said that. 
Those are our friends. They are our extended family. They're our hammocking family. Um, we miss the ones who don't come back. We love the new people that come. Either they're new to camping, they're new to hammocking, and there's so many people who are eager to embrace them and show them, well, do this to tune in your uh, um, your your quilts so that you're warm and snugly, even though it's cold, and so that you wake up, you had a good night's sleep, and you wake up in the morning and you're loving life. Um, and we miss the people who don't come back, uh, who. Life happens and they can't make it back. Um, sometimes it's because they're coming from far, far, from far, far away. Sometimes it's because, um, well, frankly, because we've gotten as big as we have. We had some special visitors this year who I'm going to refer to as the old guard, the old Florida guard, and they um, have set up. Uh, they were in a, a nearby campground. Uh, setting up a primitive site and they stopped by to say hello and it was a really a special visit um, old dog uh, hanging yak it's Andy uh, life scout uh, his wife what's her name mrs. life scout yes <laughs> C plus one C plus one, one. I'm like I, got, I can only I see can the see C, but I can't do the <laughs> C plus one we uh, love you thank you for coming um, even though we can't remember your name <laughs> they came by even if it's just for five minutes to say hello we love yeah, them. We, we think about other folks who you know were here for you know maybe once, maybe two or three years in a row. That now they can't or they're not. Um, guitar man, Rick, his beautiful wife. Um, old four hats, his beautiful wife, Georgia Pete, Georgia girl, um, and others. That um, we miss you guys. We always will have a seat for you at our table and a tree for you at our hang. Anytime you want to come back, even if it's just to say hello. Uh, because it's our, they are our family too, and 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 that doesn't change. That's a tremendous gift, and you don't give that gift back. And so, um, so that's what's special. The, the the people make a connection. Also, the people take care of one another. I know it's a trite phrase. It takes a village. Everybody does a little bit. Everybody does a little bit to keep the kitchen moving, even if it's just carrying hot pots or. Take a turn scrubbing dishes. Take a turn sweeping the floor. Um, it took you 10 minutes to sweep the floor, but somebody else does it later today, and the floor stays clean, and, and everything uh, uh, flows smoothly. And and, and hangcon happens. It doesn't just occur. It it metabolizes. It, it happens. It it becomes a thing because the people each do a little thing. And it becomes a much greater thing. Yeah. I, th I think also something else that makes HangCon special is our vendors. The vendors that come out, you know. Been so super tough. Yeah, they they come out and uh, you know we're we're not we're not expecting them to come out and you know sell. We want them to be out here on vacation. You know, kick back, relax. You know, show off your latest thing and everything like that. But um, and because of that, we've actually. Uh, our vendors that come out become part of our extended family and uh, they really what makes Hancon possible is our vendors um, from the you know we have a great raffle each year that they generously donates a lot of cool stuff yes, they do. a lot of expensive stuff <laughs> that they've worked you know blood sweat and tears into so uh, that that's also I think makes it very very special and very very unique and, and covers a lot part. of costs yeah, it does indeed. Because this isn't cheap. Makes this thing <laughs> possible. And also, for in exchange, if you will, we have become a site, maybe the preeminent site, to debut new equipment. When Dutch had the new chameleon, he had his new. When Underground Quilts had their new uh, dragon scale fabrics, they premiered them here. Uh, or, and so that's kind of a cool hang con thing. This is the place to bring out your new gear. Batch Stoves had a new uh, uh, stove kit that he came out with and, and brought several of them a few years ago. And um, that's part of the excitement that is this thing we call hang con. Awesome. Well, I personally want to thank all of you for not only doing this with me, but also what you do to put this on and keep it going. I know both beekeeper and i have done events uh, mostly in the cycling community but putting on big events and we know how much work and how difficult it is and how much pre-planning and 
pre-work goes into it that people don't see. So I just want to thank you guys for all the hard work that you put in. It, 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 it doesn't go unnoticed. You're we welcome, of course, welcome. and I cannot take that thanks without bouncing it back and saying thank you to every person who does this one little thing or, or shows things. up over and over again to do this same little thing over and over again. Uh, uh, or, or the big things. And there's people we haven't mentioned, so if you will indulge me for a moment. Florida Hanger. Richter, Florida. Richter, Florida. Work Tyre Leslie. And Jim. Um, Sometimes well, decidedly unglamorous tasks that make the logistics easy, such as organizing the parking lot. <laughs> there you go. Not real exciting stuff. But if it's not done and not done correctly, it's a fiasco. And Hancon becomes not a laid back place, it becomes a series of fiascos.